We're following the breaking news out of Haiti. The largest, most powerful earthquake in the region's history has crippled the country, measuring 7.0. There's a level of poverty in this hemisphere, which is, frankly, it's shocking unless you've seen it for yourself. The tragic thing is we have no idea how many people have died. The, the world is coming to an end. There's no help, no hospital, no electricity, nothing. No food, no food, no food, no water, nothing. First, before I say what I'm about to say, I would like to say thank you to everybody that contributed to the strip for Jason and Patrick and Derek to come here to help the people of Haiti. And to all of you guys, I would like to say, bon bye guys. It's April 23rd, today is the big, big day. We leave to Haiti in about nine hours. This is the day we take off. Everything's obviously a mess and out of control right now, but in the process of getting it all put together, um, looks like a disaster, but it's organized chaos, I promise. We're ready to do this, it's uh, it's here. The big day's here. We can't thank everybody enough who contribu contributed to the fundraiser and to the Indiegogo. Uh, just even showing your interest and showing your support you know, really getting behind us on this project means a lot to us and, uh, you know, we'll take that energy and that positivity with us down there and, and really have an impact. So, thank you all very much. We're excited. I'm ready to go. Uh, life's a beautiful thing and, and we're going to get out there and live it. So, join us around the world. Here we go. In the airport right now, we just got into Port au Prince. We're with Fane's brother Mason. Yes, Mason. How you doing, Mason? <laughs> All right, so right now we're in Port au Prince at Mason Mason's house. Now we're just having some beers, relaxing, and really just getting to feel kind of an afternoon in, in Haiti with locals. So right now we're setting up a project to get a water filtration system into Mason's family's house. This is the family of Fane who set us up with this entire trip basically. He put us in contact with all the right people, put us in a position where we'd have not only guides and translators but trusted people that we could uh, navigate through Haiti with. So right now we're sitting here and talking about how we can set up a water filtration system in Mason's house so that he can provide free water to the community and then eventually set up a business to where he can sell waters. Uh, 
there's, I don't want to say corporations, but there's businesses that here selling waters to the community every day. Why not let him set up a business in his home? He has a big home, he has op opportunity and space. Uh, part of the project is to not only provide clean, sustainable drinking water for the people of Haiti, but also to provide opportunities. And this right here is an opportunity uh, to build a business, to create something for his family that lasts not only for a year or two, uh, but for, for life. So this is what we're doing right now, is trying to create a process and trying to create plans that will help him build a business for clean water. We're driving through the streets of Port-au-Prince right now. It's about nine o'clock at night. Everybody's playing basketball. I just got done playing a little bit myself, now behind the lens. What an amazing experience to be here in Port-au-Prince, hanging out with the people, mingling, playing basketball. It's about nine o'clock at night, 9.30 at night. A little bit of rain coming down, but nothing serious. There's no issues, there's no problems. We're having fun, we're laughing, we're talking to the people, and just really enjoying our time here. All right, today is uh, April 25th. We are in Haiti. New mirror, new introduction. We're in uh, Mason's room right now, getting ready to start the day. All the guys are there, ready to go. Can't find my hat. Let's do it. What's up, fellas? You guys ready? Hell yeah, let's do it. And roll. Headed to the school today. We're going to go install the filters. There they are right there. All right, April 25th, Port-au-Prince. Day's about to start. All right, so this is gonna be a big deal. This is gonna be my first time driving in Port-au-Prince. Min, how do you feel about me driving? I'm scared when you drive in the States, so we'll see how this goes. I'm scared too. This is not a place for this. I got it. No. I got it, baby. No. We have to buy a safe feeling. My, my friend, my friend just said film experience live. Okay, go slow and then you're gonna make a right turn. Alright, so we're getting ready to go into the school right now. Start our day. Actually at the school now. The name of the school is. And your name? Perfect. She's the leader of the school, and uh, we're gonna ask her a few questions about Haiti, about the community, about the school, and uh, get her answers to them. Um, thank you for having us, first of all. Merci, that's cool. This is why. Merci too. Thank you. We're going to demonstrate now what the filter does. showing the kids how the clean water, it goes from this dirty water to the clean water. They're all extremely excited. It's a good one. It's a good one. Delicious. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you.
and we're gonna show them how to clean the filter properly. You do this with clean water. And you basically just flush it till it's clean, really. Derek right now is installing the filter into the school's already made well. We're gonna attach it to the spigot so that the filter can stay in here in the cage that's locked. Keep it cleaner, as well as give them access to flowing water at all times that's attached to a filter. I'm installing the filter that we made the adapter for yesterday for a, a spigot because they have all their water upstairs but it's still dirty. Um, but this gives the flow to them. All right, there's the completed and installed product. We've done the demonstration to the kids and to the school. They now know how to use the filter, what its purpose is, and here it is attached to their actual system. Bon, moi vont belle Haïti. Nous tous ça déjà moi vont belle Haïti. En Haïti, côté que et pourcentage pauvre là a descend et a bien plus monde riche là-dedans. Moi vont Haïti côté que gain route en l'air. Même j'ai avec l'autre pays yo, gain gain route, gain pont, gain train. Même j'ai avec tout l'autre pays yo. Moi vont Haïti côté transport en commun, pas gain problème encore. Moi vais Haïti un pays qui grand dans ce lieu l'autre pays qui dans monde là et moi je vais en Haïti tant que tu cap dit euh on paradis tant que paradis comme beaucoup on paradis mais yo t'a expliqué moi comment paradis et nous t'a arrivé en Haïti dans temps en Haïti 1950 1960 1970 et pour le plus belle que jamais April 26th All right so we're here in uh, Port-au-Prince <laughs> That's what the f I just woke up to. <laughs> Literally, this is what I woke up to. These two disgusting hooligans. They sugar. Basically spooning. And I slept there on the floor. Jason, you must be one lonely guy because if you think this is spooning. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so this is day number two, guys. As I said earlier, getting ready to walk into the orphanage over here in Port au Prince. This is where the kids uh, go to class every day. And then just down below is where the house is, is where they all live. This is the dormitories and, and housing. Right, so this is where the water supply and the water source is right now. So right now we're at the school right now, we're giving a demonstration to the children as to how when you go from the, clean, the dirty water to the clean water, uh, what that looks like and exactly what the benefits of the filter are. We want to show them exactly how to use the filter properly, also how to clean the filter properly as well. And if the kids see it, they can understand the benefits of not only taking care of the filter, but the effects on their health as well. Oh, this is for the girls. We got a girl? Let's get a girl for the princess. 
You gotta get the girls the princess ones. We can't give the boys the princess ones. <laughs> this right here is where they cook for the children in the orphanage. Uh, and this is the daily regiment here in the kitchen and then it gets transferred over to the cafeteria. What are they making? Alright, right, so right now I'm going to give you a shot of the bathroom. There's two bathrooms in the entire orphanage for all the children. As you can see, this isn't much of a bathroom. None of us typically have to experience that as our bathroom. And this is the orphanage bathroom for all the children out here in this community. All right, so they we're walking into the area where the children have to shower right now. As you can see, the conditions are less than quality for anybody, no matter where you're at. And then when you walk into this area here, this is where they shower. There's no nozzles, there's no shower heads. It's a bucket. It's just a bucket. You have a bucket and that's how you, you get clean. Uh, you know, clearly subpar conditions. Clearly something that they haven't shouldn't have to deal with. This is also where they do their laundry. This is also where they do their laundry. Gotta see, gotta see. They're running low on food right here. They've got a cooling system, but it uh, it probably does not have enough food to last. Obviously, it has very little food. How many children are at the orphanage here? Uh, we have uh, we actually have a, a, a 75 children. 75 Alright, it's April 27th. We're leaving Port au Prince right now, headed to Chacmel. We're in the car, driving to the bus station. We got the guys here with us. Jacques Mel right now heading to the orphanage. This was a kind of an impromptu situation. We thought we had an orphanage set up that we were going to in Jacques Mel. But on the bus ride over today, we actually ran into this young lady that you see here. And uh, she let us know about an orphanage here in Jacques Mel that needed the help. And unfortunately, our other plans didn't work out. And uh, as fate has it, she was able to connect us with the orphanage that she works with and we're headed there now. Met her this morning, and we're headed to her orphanage this afternoon, so it worked out nicely. We are at the future generation. So is this their main water source right here? This is another one. Oh. This is another one. Local, Welcome to the orphanage. Uh, 
All right, so we want everybody to know that this filter right here was donated from an organization that was founded in Denver, Colorado by a good friend of ours, Greg, and connected to uh, Fane, who sent us out here. Jose Lamu. Jose Lamu is uh, the company, or I'm sorry, the organization that really set us up in a major way in Haiti, and we want to make sure that this filter is in their name. dollars and 45 seconds will save lives now not not all the water at this location is this dirty but for the demonstration purposes we want to show them just how clean it does make it so that they have an understanding of just how well the filter does work so right now Derek's just transferring the clean water into a new container so that we can drink it together so we can show them that the contaminated water went to clean water now the importance of cleaning this filter is extremely high because if you clean this filter on a regular basis and you keep it clean it will last forever you take clean water it must be cleaned with clean water. Can you emphasize that? Yeah. Today's April 28th. We're at the orphanage again today, getting ready to install some new PVC piping so that they have a system that doesn't leak. I'm trying to figure it all out. What's that? I'm trying to figure it all out. We're working with what we can down here. We know there's no Home Depot in Haiti, so we're trying to... You're doing a pretty good job, man. Alright, so right now we're driving on the back of the tap tap. Derek and I are standing on the, uh, the bumper. Because as you can see, the tap tap's pretty full. Out here, if uh, the tap tap's full, but you still need a ride, your options are sit in the front, the bed, or hang off at the edge of the truck. We choose to hang off the edge. are pretty limited here in Haiti but uh, here's a local hardware store in Jacques Mel that we we're able to find has a few of the supplies that we need just enough to get the job done Mackinson, Administrator Collège Milobus. Donc, nous sommes Thomas Edel, Administrator Adjoint Collège Milobus. Nous sommes Sano Joseph, Secrétaire du Collège Milobus. Et combien de enfants sont à l'école? 175 personnes. C'est un collège qui vient du système à la philo. And do they see that kids come on a regular basis or do a lot of kids skip school? They come, but at partir de 10h, they have a lot of fun. They usually come about around 10 o'clock in the morning. They uh, tell them that they, so they starving, they can stay, they gotta go back. 
Parfois, pour café au rété, obligé de souvenir un petit corps pour bailler. Ça, c'est tout pour moi. La difficulté que j'ai c'est, premièrement, c'est que les professeurs ne sont pas capables. Vous comprenez, depuis que vous avez touché, vous n'avez pas marché, vous n'avez pas de travail. Et l'autre difficulté que j'ai encore, c'est que vous avez un grand goût de vous. Vous n'avez pas arrêté l'école à l'heure, l'école à l'heure, parce que vous avez un grand goût. If this video is to be seen by the president of Haiti or any president or any person around the world, uh, what does he want to tell the people about his school and about uh, what they need? Et quand il de si on a raison que moi-même, je ne vais pas désister avec l'école là. Non, pas faire l'école, c'est permettre tout le monde de la guerre dans la rue, la guerre dans sa vie d'accord, dans sa vie ça. Donc, je vais vous dire que je vais l'école là, je vais vous dire que je vais partir dans la guerre. Est-ce que c'est un So here at the school they have their own drum already and they have a pretty good water system set up. Uh, with the benefit of this filter obviously we'll do is provide clean water. They don't have to put chlorine in the water, they don't have to try and treat the water. They can actually bring the water supply that they have coming in, which currently is contaminated water, uh, but they can actually attach it right to their currently already installed system, which is a beautiful thing. So here they had cut this pipe because they weren't sure how to fix the problem. Um, I cut it off shorter. We got the union, we're going to get it drilled together, or we're going to get it glued together. Now um, the water will be able to be piped into here. We're going to make the next repair down there, and then we're going to make a few repairs down over here where they have cracks in the lines so that they don't leak anymore. And this one here as well. It's just covered up with plastic baggies. Obviously not a uh, great solution in order to fix the holes and fix the leaks, but the best they can do at this point. So we're going to go ahead and replace this system right here. Uh, thank you, Dad, for teaching me everything I know about working on just about anything. Without you, I wouldn't be doing this right now. So we don't have power tools with us here in Haiti. So we make the best with what we've got. And uh, Derek's ingenuity with the saws and the blades and the drills has definitely been a huge help. We're in the process of putting it all together, making so they have a filtration system that works that's connected to this drum and not just a five gallon bucket. To be able to keep this drum full of water and have a constant flow of clean water coming through will be a huge benefit for the kids at school. Because as of right now, the kids have no water at the school. And what they're having to do is leave school to go buy water and then come back to school. And oftentimes, once they leave school to go get anything, they don't return. So this is going to keep them they have them to here. work to survive. They have to work in order to get the water, get the food, get whatever else. So oftentimes, once they leave school to go get those things, there's no sense in coming back because they end up getting put to work. So as you saw a little while ago, the water tank. water tank did not have a pipe connected from the wall to the tank. So we went ahead and replaced that with new PVC pipe. We glued it together nicely, put a new union on it, and uh, the connection is now working properly. It will work properly. We've replaced the other cracks in the lines, so the water should be able to flow fine. Now we just gotta get the water into the tank, attach the filter, and this school will finally have water again.
today's April 29th. Today's our sixth day in Haiti. Today's my sixth day without a shower. Feeling good. Jack Where's Jacques Mel right now? There's the boy Thomas right there, the man of the hour, the tower of power. Getting ready to head out today and go to a base in blue. We're gonna go finish up our uh, our work over at the orphanage and fix their piping. And uh, after that, today's our day. We've been working since we've been here, so we're ready for a day off to go do some things and enjoy ourselves a little bit. So, April 29th, things are good, things are great. Time to go have some fun. All right guys, so we're headed into the orphanage for the uh, second day. Actually, technically the third day. We went yesterday, we didn't have the right parts. <clears throat> and for time purposes, it didn't make sense to come back until today. But we're gonna go finish the piping system over here to make sure it's correct. And then uh, the orphanage should be all set up and ready to go with their well system. It's, ironically enough, we were just walking down the main street coming here and I asked Thomas, our translator, if uh, he really thought people were going to use the filter. And uh, he said, yeah, he does believe they will use them. And he says that uh, he believed this shelter or this orphanage for sure would be one of the places that did use it for sure. And, Lo and behold, there you go, it's right there. They're using it, they put it to good use, they're using it properly. And uh, you know, this just goes to show that uh, these people do care and they do understand the, the purpose of this filter. So um, this, is, this is big, I'm really happy about that because I was concerned that people weren't gonna use them and I was concerned that people might not use them properly. Um, but you know, this just shows it right there, they are using it. Right here we got Derek, the rap game's Walter White. Thank you, Rue. Getting back to work. <laughs> Doing things that matter. All right, guys, so here's the new system. Derek, Thomas, and Pat just finished putting it together. Um, now we have no leaks, and we'll definitely have a much easier way for them to get the water from the well. Come all the way down the PC PVC pipe. There's a ball joint there, a ball valve right there and then the water will come out of this spout. I know the light's a little bright for you to see, but the water will come out of this spout here. They can fill up the buckets and then continue to use the filtering system just like they are over there by the front door. So it's complete, no leaks. When we first came here, you saw the leaks were out of control. The whole area was soaked. And uh, now they've got a fully working and operational system that should last quite a while. All right, guys, checking in right now. Jason, join us around the world. We're now at Basin Blue, uh, what we're told is one of the more beautiful places in all of Haiti. Just taking a trek through the jungle in order to get there real quick. We've got a guide, we've got Thomas with us, but uh, so far, everything looks amazing. It's very green jungle situation that we're walking through right now. Once we get to Basin Blue, we're told the waterfall, the, the water's absolutely stunning. So this is the trek to get there, and uh, we'll take a brief look and then once we get to Basin Blue, we'll make sure that you guys see all the beauty of a different side of Haiti. I know through, so far through this video, you've seen a lot of the poverty and a lot of the tough times that people have in Haiti. Uh, but, bonsoir. But uh, we'll definitely get you another side of Haiti and another look uh, at the beauty of this country as well. This right here is Basin Cheval, not Basin Blue. This is this is where you learn how to swim. Uh -huh. Before you go up. Before you go up. Okay. Nice. And this is like where the horse come drink water, where the where people come wash their clothes. Take a bath. Take a bath, you know, swim at this little pool right here. Excellent. You can hear the water, the water's running fast. We're at the top of Basin Blue right now. It's absolutely stunning. It's a beautiful sight to be seen. I promise the video does this no justice. But I hope you all can understand the beauty of this place and if you ever get the opportunity to come here, I highly suggest it. Right here is deep, okay. it's like six feet. Right here is like two, three feet and a half. 
This line is very slippery, don't run. So you don't fall. Over there is 75 feet. Oh wow. Okay, so how do we get across? How you get it across? You swim from here, you go across. Countryside in Jacmel. All right, so after about an hour motorcycle ride through the countryside, which was amazing. We've made our way to Thomas's family's house deep in the hills, deep in the uh, countryside of Jacmel. And it's just a, uh, a family affair at this point. Really enjoying the family. He hasn't seen his family in five years. So it really makes sense to come out here and uh, let him enjoy himself a little while. She wants pictures. She wants pictures. That lady used to love pictures. Ah, Bombay guy. Bombay guy. She said I'm happy. Bell. So much for being a part of this experience, putting in the dedication, and really caring enough to come on this trip. It's April 30th, getting ready to head back to Port au Prince from Jacques Mel. We're at the bus station right now. We had an amazing time in Jacques Mel, as you saw from the footage yesterday, Basin Blue, and all the work we did was great. So, April 30th, we're heading back to Port au Prince. So our last filter, we've decided to give to Mason and his family. He's been unbelievably gracious and helpful to us. And uh, this section of his house right here, difficult to show it right now, but the back half of his house has the ability to create a couple of different businesses. And in order to help support his family, pay the rent, pay the mortgage, uh, he's gonna create a barber shop here 
some sort of little uh, cafe situation here. And then over here is gonna be water for the community. Uh, for the first two years that he creates his business, he's gonna give away the water for free. And then after that, he'll create a business where he sells it. This is a perfect setup right here. What he'll do is he'll have piping come down from the bottom, from the top of the house, bring it down right into this system here or into this enclosure and have a system of lines that filter the, the water for the people. All right, we're here in Port-au-Prince with our translator. His name is? Claudi Thomas. And he's been with us for the last eight days touring through Port-au-Prince, Jacmel, and really being a huge help to us, not only in installing the filters and doing the work, but doing the translations for us, introducing us to the, all the right people that we need to get in contact with, and uh, really just being an aid to us uh, that we couldn't have done this trip without. So uh, we're here to thank him, but we also want to get his thoughts and uh, kind of his reflection on the last eight days. So we know that clean water is obviously a problem in Haiti, uh, but you live here, You're, you live in Port-au-Prince, you experience this life day in and day out. What do you think are the major troubles in Haiti and the things that need to be corrected beyond just water? Well, one of the main things, I think it's the food. You know, the people are starving, the kids, you know, a bunch of them, like, when they go to school, they can't even stay at school because they can't survive, you know. They, they're starving, and if you don't eat, you won't be able to think right. Your mind would not be straight. You won't be able to do anything at all. So I think that's the main thing, you know, beside the water, they need water. But uh, also, you need, they need to have food. You know, that's the, one of the most important things for the right now. In order for us to come on this trip, we did a fundraiser through a campaign online called Indiegogo. And we were able to raise enough money to pay for our airfare and our food and transportation costs and, you know, whatever was associated with this trip, by purchasing filters. We had donations from Children's Hospital Kelly Reinhardt was another one of the donators with hundreds and hundreds of toothbrushes uh, for us as well. The donators and, the, and the, the funders of this project, they're the ones that made this a reality for us. Uh, we're just the, the feet on the ground out here in Haiti. So, uh, you know, on, on behalf of Join Us Around the World, on behalf of For Love Us Still, on behalf, on behalf of uh, Pat Flanagan, uh, we want to thank all the contributors and all the donators to this project because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be down here. And, you know, I think the people of Haiti uh, enjoyed our time down here. I think it had an impact on them. And uh, we, we appreciate from the bottom of our hearts the time that you spent with us uh, because, again, we couldn't have traveled through Haiti like we did without you. So thank you very much, man. You were, you were a huge help. You and I and Pat and Derek, we all had a phrase that we said quite a lot while we were down here and it's something that stuck with us a lot. What was that phrase? Exactly what we guys doing. Good things. Bon bye guy. We're here in Port-au-Prince with and he's another one of the gentlemen that's been gracious enough to travel around with us through Port-au-Prince the last couple days and help guide us, help translate with us, help show us his community, his tent city, uh, just some of the places that, you know, he goes on a day-to-day -day basis and help us experience the real side of Haiti and not the tourist side of Haiti. Uh, so first off, we want to thank him very much for being a part of it. One question for me to you, because I know you live just around the corner from here. Uh, what's the most difficult part about living in Haiti for you? So, what's one thing that people around the world think about Haiti that you know is incorrect? Because I always say that Haiti is not good. I always say that Haiti is on the other side. And everyone who is going to the stranger who is going to enter, you constate that Haiti is not good. What do you think about three men from Denver, Colorado coming to Haiti 
to install water filters and, and work with the children. Bon, moi, je pense que c'est juste un bon bagage. Et Jason et Patrick et Derek, ils nous ont été ensemble juste pour nous constater pour venir en Haïti, pour venir garder, puis ensuite pour installer. C'est un bagage qui est normal parce qu'il n'y a pas tout le monde qui est entré en Haïti qui vient font bien pour les Haïtiens. Ça veut dire que nous même nous sommes un exemple pour les catégories par nous. Si vous pouvez dire quelque chose à vos amis et famille, either here in Haiti or around the world, what would you say to your friends and family, just to say anything that you would want to say to them? I have a message to address, I have to address a message to Papa. For my children, I have to say that 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 pour tout le monde qui a fait petit, pour tout le monde qui peut faire petit, ça veut dire leur font tout le monde, éduquer le pain, penser pour éduquer le d'abord, pour qu'il y ait une vie meilleure. And I know you have a good friend back in the United States named Fain. Yeah. Who's the man that was able to hook us up out here with you, with Thomas, with Mason, and, uh, you know, we were fortunate enough to be able to meet that man through Greg, who runs the organization Yonse Lamou. Yonse Lamou. And Fane's an amazing man. Uh, what do you want to say to Fane? Fane, moi-même, sans bon menti, dis-vous merci, un, deux, trois, quatre, il va suffire. Dis-vous, c'est vrai pour me dire, pour me dire, pour me dire, pour me montrer la chaleur comme, pour me montrer comment merci, il y a une chaleur comme, pour me dire merci. Parce que, dis-vous merci là, ou elle, c'est vrai, mais, wow, Fane, où sont. Nous sommes numéro un. Dans ce spam, nous avons toujours montré que vraiment sommes un peu de fun. Nous sommes un peu de fun. Nous sommes vraiment à partir de jeudi, nous sommes un peu de fun. Nous sommes un peu de fun. Nous sommes un peu de fun. Et nous sommes toujours prié pour nous faire un peu de fun. Nous ne pouvons pas faire des accidents, nous ne pouvons pas casser tout encore. Nous ne pouvons pas casser les pieds. Ensuite, pour toujours être bon monde, pour toujours pour bon Dieu, pour vie et santé avec toute la famille. And just on behalf of myself, Derek and Pat, we want to thank you very much for the time. You're welcome. You, <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. This was uh, the most incredible trip that I've ever been on. I know Derek and Pat, it's been absolutely amazing for them as well. And we really feel like we couldn't have done any of this without you guys. So thank you very much. IT is a good guy. All right, guys, here we are in Port-au-Prince with... La Tigue Jean Messel. This gentleman here is the brother of Fane who sent us down to Port-au-Prince and down to Haiti. Um, unbelievable amount of respect for this man and for everybody else that you've seen interviewed for not only the work they do down here, but for the, the love that they give to their people. Um, but also, he's been a tremendous help to us in driving us around the city and showing us his country, uh, being unbelievably gracious enough to allow us to not only stay at his home, uh, but to stay in his bedroom. He gave up his bedroom to us uh, while we were here in Haiti, and that's not something he had to do, uh, but he did it because his heart told him to. And uh, we want to thank him very much for everything that he's done for us while we've been down in Haiti. What's something that you want the world to know about your country? Euh, bon, je me dit que nous avons aimé Haïti changer et nous avons commencé le changement. Nous avons un paquet de bagages qui réalisé déjà sous trois ans. Nous n'avons pas trouvé l'idée depuis que nous avons fait. Par exemple, nous avons un paquet de belles routes, trop trois fêtes fait. Et nous avons prévu une route en l'air, un viaduc, et nous avons fait un café pour nous. Et je pense que c'est une grande première. Je pense que pas gagné un gouvernement qui était passé, qui fait. Par contre, un bon président qui est jeune gens, qui compte bon bagaille, pour prendre un protocole enragé. Et tout le monde est fier de président pays noir, qui c'est Michel Joseph Matéli, pour tout ça le fait pour Haïti. Par contre, je dis un gros merci dans tout le peuple haïtien. Mais il faut me dire que nous connaissons l'opposition toujours à bas de problèmes dans tout pays dans le monde là, nous t'aimerions opposition changer pour le mettre tête li avec président, 
pour faire belle bagaille, même j'ai avec toute l'autre nation qui est en opposition, ils mettent tête ensemble et puis ils développent le pays. Et ça me donne même pour Haïti. What do you think the biggest problem in Haiti is right now? Bon, dans le moment, le problème qui est le plus gros que Haïti, c'est le problème politique. Et côté opposition, je ne gouvernement sérieusement parce que vous ne pouvez pas si le gouvernement ça a pas tout le résultat qui est en Haïti. Ah, what's something that you would want to say to your brother who is back in the United States? Ah ouais, je pense que c'est deux frères solides. Ce n'est pas deux seulement, c'est un maman qui a sept petits garçons. Ce n'est pas deux, je pense que c'est nous tous qui sont solidaires entre nous et avec l'autre monde. Je me dis deux frères que je me en pile qui se fait la tigre qui vit au Colorado et qui se fait la tigre qui vit dans le même appartement avec moi. Je me dis que je me mets en pile, même si je me connais en même tout. What do you think about Derek, Jason and Patrick? Ah, je trouve que c'est trois, trois monsieur ça, c'est trois monsieur extraordinaire. Ils mettent mes yeux dans, dans toutes les choses et ils fait dans le moment où ils avec nous en Haïti. Hein. Et ils ont que dans le moment où ils sont avec nous en Haïti, ils hein. mettent mes yeux dans tout ça qu'ils fait. Même les machines qui sont en panne dans la rue, hein. ils ont gardé les yeux, ils ont machines, ils ont aidé. Et propriétaire machine, pousser machine, justement pour machine qui a débloqué la rue. Et puis, je me suis dit, je suis un petit monde, je suis un petit monde, je joue football, je joue basket avec petit monde. Et tout petit monde, je suis rencontré, je suis un petit monde. Par contre, je me trouve que trois messieurs, Haïti est très reconnaissant envers eux. Et pour le travail, je suis faire en Haïti. We just want to thank you for your hospitality, thank you for your kindness, and thank you for your heart because it's a big one and uh, we appreciate everything you've done for us. Moi, droit nous ça et parce que nous ces amis fen et fen dans pays nous, nous pensons que même respect moins bas nous en Haïtien, c'est même respect en nous mêmes nous bas fen côté lié. Travaillant, je pense que ce n'est pas trop facile, j'aime te comprendre. Je commence à plein de choses, je fais des Comme si je ne suis pas quoi que je peux recevoir, je ne sais Parce que ça m'a donné un pile, ça m'a donné beaucoup de choses. Et je ne suis pas fini par réaliser, nous comporter nous en tant qu'Haïtiens. All right, so this is our last night in Haiti. We're in Port-au-Prince right now. Getting some food at the uh, local little spot that Mason introduced us to. It's absolutely amazing. It's great food. Now we just feel really fortunate to have met everybody here. Built new friendships. Not only helped the community, but just had the opportunity to get to know these people. Deep down, made a tremendous difference not only in their lives, but it made a huge impact on our lives. So... At the end of the day, it's all about the people, it's all about the connections, it's all about the friendships, and we accomplished that at a high, high level on this trip, and this is a trip that will last in our hearts and in our minds forever, and I just can't thank everybody enough that was involved in this project, the contributors, the supporters, Derek and Pat for being on this trip with me. Thomas, Gamayel, Mason, Fane, Greg, and just everybody who really put a strong, strong effort into seeing this project through to the end. I'm tired. I'm starting to get sick. And the body's pretty worn down and exhausted at this point, but every single moment was worth it. Every cough and every stomach ache that I might have right now, more than worth it. And uh, I don't know, I'm just, I'm lost for words because I'm so happy that, you know, you just sometimes don't even know what to say. There's moments in life where you can't put it into words and a photo and a video can't capture the feelings and emotions that you have. You simply just experience it and you live in the moment and that's what this is right here. This is just living in the moment, just being here and, you know, here we are. 
in Haiti, 10 o'clock at night, Tuesday night, happy as can be, new friends, people that I'll consider family forever, so, last day in Haiti. That's nice. Oh, look at this. All right, today's May 1st, last day in Haiti, last morning in Haiti. Yesterday was last official day, but today's the last morning. Heading to the airport in about 15, 20 minutes. You saw the footage. You saw the trip. It was amazing. We're happy as can be that we came. We're ready to go home. But uh, this is an experience of a lifetime, so it's May 1st. Let's go. All right, so we're here at the airport. We just finished up everything. We're getting ready to leave. This is a happy and a sad moment all at the same time. I don't really know what to say. Words don't express how I feel right now, but we're leaving, so. Bienvenue en Haïti.